Welcome back. As we move into the fall season and a little bit out inside from outside, our focus turns to what are we going to do inside? And one of my favorite things to do is hang out in the kitchen and look for fun things to do. So I am excited to introduce our next guest. Remy Gottheil is a chef. He's an engineer. He is a circus artist, a food nerd, a fitness enthusiast. He is a home bartender and a very, very lucky husband by his own admission. <laughs> so we love that. And he is now a food blogger. We have not spoken to food bloggers in the past. We've had chefs, we've done our own cooking in studio and out, but now we're going to learn about food blogging, which if you're asking me is the new form of pornography. So Remy, welcome to the show. Let's talk about your food porn because, oh my God, not just the beautiful photos of food, but the instructional how-to and the shift from a restaurant chef to a food blogger. So give us a little bit of your story. How'd you get here? Well, first off, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure. Um, how I got into food blogging, well, before the pandemic, I was working in restaurant kitchens for years. And like for so many, when the pandemic shut everything down, it was a natural or necessary time to switch gears. Yep. Um, recipe development had always been my favorite part of working in kitchens. I love the creativity of developing a new recipe concept, the art of bringing that vision to life, the science and precision of iterating that recipe, testing it and controlling for multiple factors until ultimately achieving the flavor and the essence of that recipe. Um, so that being said, a food blog where I could post original recipes of my own seemed like a natural fit and the right time to make that switch. Once everything was going remote, it was the perfect timing. So we're thrilled because the All Purpose Kitchen, which is your blog, um, makes so much sense. I mean, so many of us are turning to things, even, even with COVID, I don't want to say disappearing, but let's say dissipating. And, and we're still, though, focusing on the things that we learned in the last couple of years, which was you know, among them, we could have fun in the kitchen and that it's healthy to cook for ourselves. And we'd like to have a little bit of help in doing that. What I love about your approach is that you guarantee success. And that is something that very few people are willing to do in any industry, <laughs> no less, no less cooking, but guaranteeing that we're going to love what we eat and showing us how to do that, I find is is such an important part of me wanting to be in the kitchen, right? If if you can help me cook better, whether it's for my family or for myself or for a party, then why not? So how how do you approach this and how do you actually guarantee that kind of success? The vision for the blog is, again, a collection of original recipes but they all have to be reliable, accessible, and presentable. And that's the overarching theme. So I make sure that the recipes are rigorously tested so that they're delicious and they're reproducible. Um, I make sure that there aren't any prohibitive cooking techniques, equipment, or ingredients, which makes the recipes more accessible to as wide of an audience as possible. And all the recipes are really geared towards home cooks in a home kitchen. Um, and all the recipes are things that you could feel good about hosting with, about presenting to your own. Um, and my number one priority always is flavor. Every recipe has to be delicious to the point that it's memorable weeks later and you're still thinking to yourself, I have to make that again. Um, <laughs> The next highest priority I would say is the instructions. The process has to be very clear and easy to follow. For lack of a better word, foolproof. 
So I, I make sure to address the most common questions and pitfalls so that you can make that recipe with confidence. Um, and then in terms of making the blog a good resource for people in the kitchen to learn more, the content that I put in the blog post is very important to me. Um, I want it all to be useful, thoughtful, and engaging. So I'm never writing just to fill space. It's all meant to enhance guests of the blog, to enhance their experience with the recipes. Um, that might sometimes mean some food science, some food history, sometimes it's suggested wine pairings. Um, oftentimes it involves a deeper dive into the process of making that recipe, but all that meant to expand your culinary knowledge. So what are some of the challenges that you take into consideration? But I feel like that's, you know, everybody's kind of sitting back saying, oh yeah, but he doesn't know I've got nothing. <laughs> You know, I've got a saucepan and I've got a few good ingredients, but I don't have a lot of knowledge or skill. So what are some of the challenges that you've actually had to recreate in your own kitchen? I imagine as a professional chef, you know, you have moved beyond so many of them that coming back and recognizing what most of us are going through in the kitchen is your own challenge. <laughs> That's totally fair to say, yes. Um, I have a lot of experience in a restaurant kitchen, but as well cooking at home. So what it's like to be in a home kitchen and many a time a small home kitchen. Um, in terms of the ingredients used, that's not to say that all the recipes only use pantry staples, although there are some that do, but all of them ingredients that are readily available at local grocery stores. And then in terms of addressing the potential challenges of the average home chef, kind of making the recipe over and over again in the recipe testing process really makes me look at each step, evaluate where things could go wrong. And I do have to put myself in the shoes of someone who hasn't done this a thousand times. Um, but it really comes down to describing as specifically as possible, the process of making that recipe. Um, so looking, I, there's often a, a cook time as well as what you're looking for, what should have been achieved in that cook time. So redundancy helps multiple different ways of identifying when you've accomplished that step. Um, there are also definitely process, processes or kitchen techniques that are known to be common hurdles in the kitchen, um, making caramel, roasting chicken. And so before I even test that recipe to identify the pitfalls myself, I already know what I'm going to address in some of those circumstances. That's gotta be very helpful. So <clears throat> I've never really talked about this on air, but I wrote a children's book about um, the, the premise is about uh, random acts of kindness that the children do during the night. It's actually a little boy and his two dogs. And the first book is called Baking Friday Bread, which was a tradition and is a tradition in my brother's home uh, where my sister-in-law would make challah on Friday, but she would also make any other bread. She loves, her favorite thing is to make bread. So she's also a pediatrician. And one day there was a sick girl and she had to go to the hospital to take care of her patient and she wasn't able to make the bread. During the night, the boy and the dogs wanted to do something nice for mommy. So they got up and they made the bread. And of course the antics ensued. But the point was that at the end of the book, I wanted to include the recipe and a guide for doing that activity with children. The whole idea is that it would encourage family activity time. And that's what I feel like your blog actually encourages that in the all-purpose kitchen, you talk about some basic utensils, you talk about basic ingredients, 
talk about some alternatives because my challenge was I had to make that challah recipe 400 times. <laughs> I was gifting neighbors with challah for months. <laughs> until they loved it. They did love it. I was I was getting a little over it, to tell you the truth. But I'm also gluten free. And so not only did I want to, and I am not a chef by any means. This was one recipe that I simply had to master. And I and I wasn't using someone else's recipe. I had ingredients from different recipes that I knew I wanted to include. So when I look at your blog and I think about how would I switch this up? How would I change ingredients? How would I create an alternative opportunity to make it for whether it's got to be dairy free or gluten free or nut free? Um, you know, you have addressed a number of those things in your recipes, but I'm curious if you go through that process recipe by recipe, or are there certain places where it seems natural to, to suggest alternatives? How do you approach everybody's of alternate needs? I, I don't, right? We all dietary have dietary restrictions dietary or, or restrictions. even just preferences. There you go. Um, well, it is, it is helpful and a, a good learning experience that I have many people in my own family with dietary restrictions from gluten-free to nut-free, egg-free, low sodium, diabetes. So I've had to address many of those dietary restrictions myself when I've been cooking at home. Um, I do state a lot of the potential substitutions to address some of those dietary restrictions in the recipes on the blog. And I'd say for most of those, I make those variations myself. I test them each some of them I might not if it's similar enough to something else that I've done before, or I simply know that it would work without any sort of issue. Um, so a bit of both. The recipes are um, labeled when they are appropriate for those most common dietary restrictions. You could find those labels on the recipes on the blog as well. And in terms of putting your own spin on recipes like you were just ad addressing or talking about a minute ago, there's a whole subset of recipes on the All Purpose Kitchen blog that I've labeled the Made to Order Recipe Series, where I'll introduce a standard recipe that's meant to be a blueprint of sorts. And I'll also write out and post on the blog several variations of that same recipe, different flavors or ingredients. And then I'll also write out guidance and advice for how to customize that recipe yourself. So you could put your own spin on it, your own flavors into it, um, made to order to your own preferences. Perfect. So while we're talking about this, we have photos running from, from your blog okay. and our viewers have been watching some of your fabulous uh, food photography, food porn, as it were. I understand you take all your own photographs and so you style your own food which is part of the presentation, right? I've always said, I want my food to look better. So people want to eat it, whether it tastes good or not, it should look good. So that is that something that you um, offer in depth or do you talk more about that? I didn't, I didn't notice specifics about that on the blog. I, I can't say that I do, not on the blog. Okay. Um, Thank you so much for the generous compliment. I Beautiful. appreciate that you think the photos look great. <laughs> um, I do it all myself, yes. And there's no special equipment or training that goes into it. I take the photos with my iPhone and I edit them on Google Photos. <laughs> um, all of the food in the, in the photography is made exactly according to the recipe, ready to eat. So that is what you will get when you follow the recipe. The only thing I might do is fuss with the garnishes a little bit to make sure it looks exactly the way I want. Good. And I encourage our viewers to look at that because I think we all feel better, even, even when I plate something nicely for myself. It makes me feel more successful with what I've done. I mean, a plate of roasted vegetables is only a plate of roasted vegetables. And then you stick a sprig of rosemary on top and you feel like you're in a restaurant. <laughs> garnishes go such a long way. And in terms of the blog, the photography, if I had to pick a fourth priority to what I was talking about earlier after flavor process and the blog content, it would probably be the photography. 
I think of the photography as the advertising. Mm -hmm. um, it's what draws people in. And yes, it is extremely engaging and kind of daydream worthy to look at. But, but it's so it easy to do. Easy the way you've done it, it makes it makes us feel like we can do it too. And that that's I think what it's, you're really after. And and it's true. It does present an option or ideas for how to present that food yourself. Absolutely. And you eat with your eyes, without a doubt. It is a major part of enjoying a meal. Absolutely. Before we go, I have two two more questions. One is how can our viewers find you? So theallpurposekitchen.com is where you'll find the blog. Um, We're also available on social media at Instagram and Facebook at The All Purpose Kitchen. Perfect. And um, the other question is, if you had to recommend two, two items, whether they're appliances or um, tools, something that everyone should have in their kitchen just to make things feel easy and approachable, what would be your top two recommendations for every home cook? It's so hard to narrow down to only two. A, a rimmed sheet pan, a rimmed baking sheet, absolutely. Whether you're roasting vegetables, uh, roasting proteins, baking cookies, roasting nuts, making granola, which is another. It goes a long way. And yes, granola recipe. recipe is amazing. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. It's simple, but so good. Yeah. So yes, a rimmed baking sheet, absolutely. More than one, honestly. And a, a good mixing bowl, really. It, obviously, there's so many other pieces of equipment that are essential in the kitchen, but any piece of equipment that you kind of take for granted, use often, and if you can upgrade it to something that's sturdier or just easier to wash or doesn't rock or slide around on the countertop, those small incremental benefits over the lifetime and number of times that you use that piece of equipment, you won't realize it immediately, but makes your life so much easier. You're so right. You know, I used to have a stock pot that I used for popcorn and I burned it and it was never quite the same. And then my aunt saw this and she said, that's ridiculous. You need a real stock pot. And she bought me a beautiful stock pot. And just that one upgrade in my kitchen made it to till today makes such a difference that one pot makes everything, anything I can possibly use. So I can definitely agree that upgrading things is equal to, or if, or more important even to, you know, knowing what you need to bring in as an addition. Remy, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thanks for coming on today. I hope our viewers will go to the allpurposekitchen.com. We're going to give them the website on, um, on the screen and also in the blog on our website. And they can then sign up for your newsletter and they can stay in touch. Thank you so much, Lauren. It's been a pleasure. It's really been a pleasure. And we'll be right back. <laughs>